All right, this is the Caddis Adult that I'm tying for you now. Um, this is a pattern that um, I've tied for years and have had great success with. It's sort of a, a take on um, several other caddis patterns that help to um, catch fish, put, put fish in the net. Um, this caddis is one that I tie to kind of imitate more of a uh, kind of a spent caddis or a cripple, but it works well when the adults are hatching, when they're active. Those caddis, when, they, when they're active, they're, they're really, um, you know, you'll see them fluttering and skittering on the water. They'll be laying eggs and dropping on the water. They're real active and they'll produce a real splashy rise take from that, from that fish, that trout. Um, and, and so this is a good one. It kind of imitates one of those caddis that's a little bit stuck in the film and a little bit more vulnerable and um, fish eat it real aggressively. Um, I'm doing this on a curve shank hook. This is on a uh, TM Coat uh, 2487. I'm doing this on a size 12 just so the camera can pick it up a little easier. But usually when I'm tying these for fishing, uh, it's like a size 14 or a size 16. So we'll size them down a little bit. But base it off what caddis you have in your local waters. Um, for thread, I'm using uh, Semperfly. And this is the Nano Silk in uh, brown or copper. And this is uh, uh, like a gel spun poly thread that's really, really tough, really durable, really strong, and not much bulk. So I like this a lot for these dry flies. Okay, let's get started. We're gonna start by uh, offering up that Semperfly Nano Silk and get this thread on the hook shank. And uh, I'm taking this back to just about where the barb of that hook is, maybe just a wrap or two behind it, but relatively, relatively short in comparison to what we've done on these other uh, caddis flies. And I nip off that tip. I'm gonna tie in the, for the body. You can do anything you want on this. You can do a dubbed body if you like. Um, I prefer a, a buy-up body on these because it provides a little bit more segmentation. Um, and uh, I, I do feel like that's a trigger. I feel like these trout will key in on that segmentation. It looks a little bit more natural to them. So I'm gonna take, this is in a gray olive uh, turkey biot, and I'm gonna take that biot and I'm gonna tie this in so that it will hopefully lay down with the flat side rather than the, the ruffled side. Now, because this is a size 12, I don't typically do this on 14s and 16s, but because it's a 12, I am gonna bulk this up just a tiny bit so that we can have um, just a little bit better proportion. So I'm just gonna take a little bit of dubbing. It doesn't matter what color or what kind, but I'm just gonna put a little dubbing on here. And uh, this is just gonna help me give a little bit better body proportion to this bigger hook. I do this if I'm doing them in like a 10 or an eight, like if we're doing like an October caddis, I will use this same pattern, just changing the size of the hook and the colors, and I will bulk this up just a little bit. So I'm just gonna put a little layer of thread down, which will add just a little bit more girth to this body. But when you see these, these hydropsyche is what we're, we're uh, imitating here, this species of caddis. These guys have, they don't have a real thick, beefy body. They're actually pretty slender and pretty thin. Okay, so now we're gonna wrap our biot and create our body. I'm just gonna grab a little hackle plier here and see if I can grab this biot just a little bit easier. And I'm just gonna try and wrap this biot going forward and create, as you'll see, smooth taper and segmentation. As we wrap this forward, it's just starting to kind of show, you can see the segmentation that shows through with that biot. And that's what I want. I want that smooth taper. Kind of just looks like a little carrot shaped taper there. And once I get that to the tie off point, I just bring that up and bring that thread over it and tie that off securely. Take a scissor and nip off that little butt end. I have a little separation down there. So I'm getting that one off the bottom too. Just a little cleaner there. Okay, and my thread just popped. So let's get that restrung. All right, we've got thread reattached. We are back in the game. 
Okay, so this fly um, I do for buoyancy and movement and profile, I do a CDC wing or CDC underwing. And so again, based on the color of, of uh, caddis I'm trying to imitate, this is a tan. Um, this is a Trout Hunter Premium CDC, a natural tan. Um, here's a plug for purchasing the best materials you can afford. Um, these CDC feathers you'll see are just super dense. And I mean, this is one of them. I'm gonna put three on for this size 12, um, just because it adds buoyancy and, and floatability. Um, when I'm tying like a size 14 or 16, I, I only need two of these. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sort of match up, match up these tips so that they're as even as can be. Get those three feathers tips matched up and kind of bundle them together. And then just once we get them to a point where you're happy with that amount of evenness. When they're even, then you can tie in. So that's about where I want them to be. Okay, so I'm gonna flip those over and we're gonna tie these in so that our so that our butts are fe or our tips are facing back. And I lost that one. There we go. Okay, so those tips are gonna be back. And when I tie these in, I want these tips to extend to about the bend of the hook shank. I don't want to go way out far long like that. I want them to be about to the bend of that hook shank. That's about the right proportion for these. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to offer them in with a little pinch wrap and bring that down and through. All right, so there's our, that's our underwing. And uh, I'm gonna leave these, these butt ends hanging out here for now. Next, I'm gonna put in an overwing, and the overwing I'm gonna use is a select cow elk in this dyed medium dun color. And um, I've got it in my stacker here. Let me just stack these and make sure we've got our tips even. So I only want, I want this pretty sparse. I only want 10 or 15 fibers maybe. Pretty sparse. I've probably got a little more there than I want. Take a few of those out. Try that again. Good. Okay. So pretty sparse overwing here. And these I'm going to lay on top and just, just even those tips with the tips of the CDC that they're laying on. And same thing, you're just going to offer in a little pinch wrap and bring that down. And this, this gel spun poly is, it's strong enough it'll cut through hair so you've got to kind of make sure you put a wrap or two down before you really reef into it and I don't love to reef into it I'll come in through these butts a little bit and that helps to kind of secure those two but if you really pop down on that that'll that will actually cut those and you'll you'll lose all your your hair you'll have to start over there okay so lastly we're gonna hackle this I know this looks like a mess right now it'll look clean in a second but we're gonna put a hackle on this for legs um, there are some patterns that, uh, you know, caddis patterns where the legs are all through the body for floatability's sake. In reality, when you see these caddis, their legs aren't all through their body. They're actually up towards the head, kind of in that thorax area. And so that's where I put these legs. And I just have, this is just a brown uh, uh, neck feather from uh, a widening neck. This is just a, a medium brown. Again, this is to match the color of the legs of the natural. So I've, I've taken out a feather and sized it appropriately for a size 12 hook. And I've down towards the end, you'll see here that I've cut it off and then I've just nipped these fibers real close. So I've got these little stub ends. That's where I'm gonna tie in at. And I offer this in so that the feathers, the, the concavity of this feather the feathers will lay back, the concavity will lay back. So I'm gonna put this in on my side, tie it in with a couple, two or three turns. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lift all this junk up and I'm gonna tie in and secure up underneath this too. So that way that stem is secured in two, at two points and it will ensure that that thing doesn't pull out. 
So I've got that stem secured and then I bring my thread up and just let it lay there. I'm gonna clip out that little tip of the feather. All right, so now what I'm trying to do is I'm gonna, with my thread, I'm gonna bring this in. I'm just gonna sort of widen this out, this little band where I'm gonna wrap my hackle because I wanna be able to get seven or eight turns of hackle in here. I want this to be hackled enough that we've got good floatability here. Okay, so I've got my neck feather and we're just gonna hackle this and we're just wrapping from back to front with this brown neck hackle, laying the wraps in one in front of the other. Uh, as I lose it, we'll start that over. I'm gonna use a little hack applier here this time and I don't lose it. And I get five or six wraps is all, which is great. There's six, okay. That's plenty. Oodles of hackle, these are good, good hackle feathers and they are dense. Okay, so we have all our junk here. We're gonna pull that junk out of the way and I'm just gonna bring up my thread and we're gonna tie this off right at the eye. Tie off that stem with two or three good solid wraps and then I like to, I'll unclip this, I do like to just ensure that I've got everything secure. So I'll pop everything up, make sure all my hackle on bottom is out of the way with my fingers. And I'm just gonna do four or five good cleanup wraps right in front of that. And that also traps that hackle stem down so that I know it's, I know that it's not gonna come loose. Okay. All right, lastly, we're gonna whip finish right below all this junk, get our junk out of the way. And then pop the thread off. So my hackle, either trim or sometimes I can even just, let's see if I can pop it out. Pop it out there and then all this junk the CDC and the butt ends of that elk, I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna trim it just stubby like a little, like a little elk hair caddis head. Trim that up. And then just make sure that my hackle is all perpendicular to my hook shank. Now lastly, what I'll do is I'll take this uh, in the hackle and I'll just kind of, I'll just kind of nip out those bottommost fibers which allows this thing to ride more flush in the water. So when it lands, it's, it's just very flush down in the, in the film. And I think that's why this fishes so well is that it does mimic kind of a trapped or a crippled type of a, of a caddis, a little more vulnerable. Cause like I mentioned, when they're, when they're active, they're really active, they're fluttering and skittering and the fish they, they have to work quickly. So if this one's there, you'll have a more sure eat. You can see on the bottom there, that's got that nice segmentation through the body. Nice caddis profile, coloration looks great. That's the caddis adult. Hope you enjoyed it.